subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Elephant bone tools dating back to 400,000 years ago and what would the earth look like in the future? These are some of the stories that we talk about on this episode of Scientifics. I am Mohana Basu and every week on The Prince Scientifics, I take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. This week, scientists have discovered a trove of tools made out of elephant bones in Italy dating back to roughly 400,000 years, some of which wouldn't become objects of common use for another 100,000 years. Although the use of bone tools were common at the time, it is the way they had been created that impressed the scientists. The researchers recovered the tool from a site called Castel di Chiro, not far from modern-day Rome. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, it had a stream that attracted thirsty 13-foot-tall creatures called straight-tusked elephants. The scientists believe that elephants would occasionally die of natural causes at the site and the ancient humans at that area made good use of the remains. These Stone Age residents produced tools using a systematic, standardized approach, a bit like a single individual working on a primitive assembly line. The team believes that humans at the time were breaking the long bones of the elephants in a standardized manner and producing standardized pieces to make bone tools. Such kind of attitude did not become common until much later. Right around 400,000 years ago, Neanderthals were just beginning to emerge in Europe. The researchers suspect that these ancient humans were actually Neanderthals. Some of the tools were pointed and could have been used to cut meat. Others were wedges that may have been helpful for splitting heavy elephant femurs and other long bones. The team also discovered a single artifact carved from wild cattle bone, which resembles what archaeologists today call lizwa, a smoother type of tool that ancient humans used to treat leather. But such tools didn't become common until about 300,000 years ago. Also this week, scientists have identified a hair-like protein hidden inside bacteria that serves as a sort of on-off switch for nature's electric grid, which is a global web of bacteria-generated nanowires that permeates all oxygen-less soil and deep ocean beds. Scientists are seeking to use this natural electrical grid to generate electricity, new biofuels, and even self-healing electronic components. Almost all living things breathe oxygen to get rid of the excess electrons when converting nutrients into energy. Without the access to oxygen, however, soil bacteria living deep under the oceans or buried underground over billions of years have developed a way to respire by breathing minerals through tiny protein filaments called nanowires. Just how these soil bacteria use nanowires to exhale electricity has remained a mystery. Since 2005, scientists had thought that the nanowires are made up of a protein called pili that many bacteria show on their surface. However, scientists found that these nanowires are made of entirely different proteins. For the new study, researchers used cryo-electron microscopy to reveal that this pili structure is made up of two proteins and instead of serving as nanowires themselves, pili remain hidden inside the bacteria and act like pistons, thrusting the nanowires into the environment. Understanding how bacteria create nanowires will allow scientists to tailor bacteria to perform a host of functions from combating pathogenic infections or biohazard waste to creating living electrical circuits. It will also assist scientists seeking to use bacteria to generate electricity, create biofuels and developing self-repairing electronics. Meanwhile, scientists have found that oat cloud, the spherical layer of icy objects at the end of our solar system, 
may be home to countless interstellar objects that outnumber the objects belonging to our solar system. In 2019, astronomers spotted a rogue comet from another star system in our solar system. Named Borisov, the icy snowball was the first and only interstellar comet ever detected by humans. But the new study suggests that these interstellar visitors are more common in the solar system than we think. In fact, they may outnumber the objects within the solar system. Before the detection of the first interstellar comet, theory on the formation of planetary systems suggested that there should be fewer visitors than permanent residents. The latest study, which makes calculations using conclusions drawn from Borisov, suggests that interstellar visitors prevail over objects that are native to the solar system. The Oort cloud spans a region some 200 billion to 10 trillion miles away from our sun, and unlike stars, objects in this cloud don't produce their own light. So these two factors make the debris in the south of solar system hard to see. Observations with next generation technology may help confirm the team's results. The launch of the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, which is scheduled for 2022, for example, will possibly help detect many more visitors like Borisov. Also this week, scientists predict what will happen to the Earth's continent about 250 million years later. Using computer models to travel forward in time, researchers predict two scenarios both of which involves all of the continents moving together to form the next supercontinent. The first scenario predicts the formation of the supercontinent of Orica, a low-latitude supercontinent. Orica will have very little snow or ice and an average temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius. The second possibility is that a supercontinent called Amasia forms at a high altitude along with a smaller Antarctic subcontinent about 200 million years from now. Amasia will be a continent dominated by snowfall and ice sheets. This bright white supercontinent will reflect back more of the sun's heat and have a climate similar to the Earth's last ice age. The researchers say that these predictions of how the Earth might evolve may help look for exoplanets that may have once hosted life. Meanwhile, a Russian space official this week raised concerns about the deteriorating state of Russia's segment of the International Space Station, warning that the out-of-date hardware could lead to irreparable failures. According to Vladimir Solofyov, chief engineer of the Energia Rocket and Space Corporation, 80% of the in-flight systems of Russia's segment have reached the end of their service period. Energia, a manufacturer of spacecraft and space station components, is the leading developer of Russia's section of the ISS, which is a joint venture with the US, Canada, Japan and the European Space Agency. Russia had previously indicated that it plans to leave the ISS after 2025 and launch its own orbital station. The official also said that small cracks had been discovered on Russia's Zarya cargo module launched in 1998. Launched in 1998, it is one of the oldest modules of the ISS. Also in July, the entire ISS had briefly tilted out of orbit after thrusters of a new Russian module reignited several hours after docking. That's all for this week. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box.